so this afternoon we've got three papers um, on the topic of disparities and inequalities. So um, it was really interesting to hear Melanie's presentation before lunch on um, how you're using the LFS data, so really looking forward to these. Um, so first of all we've got uh, Dahia Ruschke, uh, who's an associate professor at the City Region Economic Development Institute in the Birmingham Business School at the University of Birmingham. Um, she's a geographer by training and her research focuses on changes in employment and of the location of work and questions of economic inclusivity. Um, so, welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak today about working at home. Uh, it's a bit strange because you don't see your presentation here. <laughs> so we have seen a large-scale uh, shift in the geography of workplaces and in fact it has been a large shift in um, the um, in employees' uh, workplaces from uh, the office into the home. The self-employed, and uh, most of my research has uh, focused on self-employment, um, have had uh, very high levels of uh, working at home before the pandemic. Um, employees um, were given the right to request um, a flexible working, of which home working is one element, since uh, two 2003. However, uh, before the pandemic, a very low proportion of employees worked mainly at home. It was 3% in 2019, according to the annual population survey, uh, more employees worked sometimes at home. So now we call it more hybrid working. Before the pandemic, it was more often called telecommuting. Um, so the, um, the question why there was this large gap between technological advances and the Technologically, uh, uh, technological ability of jobs to be carried out uh, at home and the reality was often explained with concerns of employers about productivity, uh, what happens uh, with employees' productivity when they're out of sight. And um, related to that, the higher prevalence of high-skilled, high-educated and older workers amongst uh, those who mainly worked at home before the pandemic was explained uh, that with the fact that more trusted employees were allowed to work at home. Um, in 2023, the uh, percentage share of employees who worked mainly at home had risen to 22%. Um, that was up from 3% in um, 2019. So in 2023, um, uh, 5.6 uh, million employees were working mainly at home. So it has been a, a very dramatic shift and long-lasting, obviously, so far. Um, in my uh, presentation, I will focus on employees who have seen this, uh, or for those uh, we have uh, seen this massive uh, shift, and um, I will look at the question, what has changed, what patterns um, have um, been uh, persistent, and I will look particularly at the geography, so where, the where of home working and who, and we'll look at the disparities and uh, why the geography is important or interesting. Uh, it's because the, the home working geography was uh, really an element of the wider, really stark regional uh, disparities uh, in the UK. Um, and uh, where yeah, certain industries or occupations have been uh, concentrated, so the, the very uh, classical north-south uh, uh, divide. And the question is now whether with this massive increase in homeworking amongst employees, whether we have seen um, yeah, um, more uh, yeah, equal patterns uh, in home working. 
And um, regarding the WHO, I'm particularly interested whether it's still so concentrated in high skilled, high um, qualified, and uh, older, so <laughs> so called more trusted uh, workers. Um, I use the um, annual population survey um, uh, running from January to uh, December 2019 and 2023. Uh, I only use the, um, the safeguarded files which has um, the question whether people or where people uh, mainly work in their main job. Um, the, um, the secure fights have since uh, uh, the COVID pandemic also more questions on remote working which I don't have access to yet. Uh, that will be interesting. Um, I define as mainly working at home from this question. Um, so the response is that people work in their own home or uh, that they work on the same grounds or building as their home. So these two response items, I collapse here um, and identify this as me working at home. Uh, I only look at employees uh, 16 to 64 years old and um, as regions I define the government office uh, uh, regions. There are nine in England and then Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. Um, and starting off with descriptive analysis, um, in the first column you see the uh, regional distribution of those who mainly work at home. In the second column I show you the regional distribution of um, the employee workforce. The third column is so the difference between these two columns which shows us whether there is an underrepresentation of home workers in that regional employee workforce uh, or an overrepresentation. Um, these three columns are for 2013. In the last column I show you only this difference in the home working workforce and the total workforce by region for 2019, um, so as comparison. And we can see that there is a concentration of those um, mainly working at home in London and the South um, East, so they have a, a here higher proportion to their workforce um, who are employees. And we can also see compared to 2019, this concentration of those who work at home in London is a new trend. Um, so previously we, have, um, we had a stronger concentration of employees who worked at home in the southeast. Uh, most likely the, com uh, the enlarged commuter belt for those who work um, at home. Um, before the pandemic there was also concentration of those who worked at home in um, the southwest of England and we have seen here the greatest um, change. What we can see is that in the north of England there is still this underrepresentation of those who work at home, and particularly in the East Midlands and the West Midlands. Now the question is how um, can we explain the spatial disparity? Is it because of the spatial disparity of industries? Is it because of the spatial unevenness of occupations? or of um, high educated uh, employees, which, uh, which I measure here as those having a degree, or is it also related to the spatial unevenness of the demography of the employee workforce? So I look at this uh, first. Um, I use um, um, multivariate um, analysis um, here. Uh, with a dependent variable, uh, um, uh, whether people mainly work at home uh, or not. And I show you five models. Um, so just to explain 
these are uh, testing the influences. Is it, is it industry, is it occupation uh, or degree? So in the first model to the left, I only include uh, regional variables and individual uh, characteristics like uh, gender, um, being married or not, age, ethnicity, and long-term health condition. And we can see uh, if we only include these uh, individual characteristics uh, of employees, the, the, uh, multi the estimates, which are odds ratios uh, in this case, are pretty much like the descriptive findings. We can see there is a concentration of working at home in uh, the reference group is London, um, in London and the South East for all other regions there is um, there are lower odds of working at home. So it's, it's not much related to individual, uh, to the demography of the workforce. In the second model I add industry and we can see this has the biggest effect on the estimates compared to the other variables. Uh, you can see this also at the bottom, you see the R square. Um, and um, this um, explains the underrepresentation of uh, working at home in the Northwest, Yorkshire, uh, East Midlands, West Midlands. So it's, um, the, a higher prevalence of um, manufacturing um, industries. Um, in the third model, I, I add occupational uh, groups, which um, explain much less so, um, uh, for most uh, other regions why they have this underrepresentation, and uh, even more so for a degree. Um, if we include them all, um, we can see that um, London, given its industry uh, structure, occupational structure, high um, concentration of high educated uh, workers, we would expect a much higher um, proportion of those working at home. Uh, an exception is Northern Ireland, um, given its industry structure, um, and skills in the workforce um, in Northern Ireland, home working is uh, much lower. So the question is, why is this? Is it because of uh, employers not um, being willing, for example, to um, to grant <laughs> the re uh, the request uh, uh, for home working, for example? Um, and now I look at the change in the patterns. And here I pool 2019-2023, the annual population survey. Uh, I run again uh, binary logistic regressions with many working at home as dependent variable or not. And I use interaction terms with the year dummy to test specifically the change in patterns. Um, I again use employees 16 to 64 years old. Um, there's not enough space on slides to show you the main effects and the interaction effect, so I apologize for that. Um, I only look at um, the most interesting findings and I only show you interaction terms. I'm happy to share uh, full, the full uh, model findings with you if, if, if you know me. Um, here I look first at the change in regional patterns and it's what the multivariate and descriptive analysis already showed. Um, we can see that um, there has been a shift away uh, from the southeast um, relative to other regions, uh, with comparators London, um, Northern Ireland, um, um, has much lower prevalence uh, and has uh, the, the, the gap has widened yeah, here in comparison uh, to London compared to 2019. Um, 
the, um, none of the, the regions in the north of England have had a uh, change uh, compared to London, so haven't really benefited from the change in working patterns, um, except from Scotland. Um, in Scotland, uh, home working has increased relative to London in 2019, but that's the only region. Uh, with respect to social patterns, I look here at um, occupational group and degree, and here we can see um, a very strong change. We can see that in 2019 there was a higher prevalence of um, managerial occupations uh, working mainly at home, which chimes with the hypothesis of. Um, yeah, the trusted worker. So we can see now there is some trickle-down effect. Um, so now more um, employees in professional occupations, associate professional occupations, and in admin and uh, secretarial occupations work at home compared to managers in 2019. We see a strong change of sales and customer services. However, for the other uh, occupational group, the, the, the gap has widened <coughs> compared to managers in 2019. And we can now also see a stronger concentration in, in um, those with a degree um, uh, working mainly at home. Um, and last but not least, the change in demographic patterns is also um, quite remarkable. Uh, we see that uh, men in 2023 um, yeah, had a higher prevalence to work at home compared to women in 2019. Those working at home have also become younger. Um, are less likely to be married compared to 2019 and home workers have become ethnically uh, more diverse particularly we have seen this increase in um, black ethnic uh, groups working at home compared to whites in 2019. Um, now coming to uh, conclusions um, so the home working revolution has uh, really not transformed the regional geography of home working. Um, something I forgot to mention in that table, so if you look up the presentation, uh, this descriptive table um, um, uh, showing the regional disparities, I included also the dissimilarity index, the Duncan index of dissimilarity which showed that the, dissimilar the dissimilarity of home working patterns in the UK has slightly decreased. However, this is not because we have seen now uh, that um, uh, regions in Northern England have a higher uh, prevalence of working from home. It's more a shift within the South. Yeah? It's more a shift away from the Southwest to London. Um, so it's not that the south west, uh, the south and north divide has, uh, has changed uh, at all. Um, we see large industry effects um, um, explaining the home working uh, geography patterns, particularly for the Midlands. However, Northern Ireland is a very different, very exceptional case, probably like in many respects. Um, so I uh, hear a big question why uh, the prevalence of home working is so low, so lower than in other regions. Um, um, on, a pos on the positive side, if we see home working as a flexible working arrangement that uh, might increase work-life balance, then um, it's good news to see that um, um, more in sales and customer services and administrative and secretarial occupations uh, worked at home. The demographic uh, change is striking. Home workers are now younger. Home working is less associated with traditional lifestyles, uh, it's less uh, feminized and more ethnically diverse. So in this sense, we could say it has become more representative of the workforce. However, it's, 
it has only become more representative of the highly educated workforce. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> and I include here um, two papers, one with Ellen Feldstedt, uh, looking at so the productivity and working at home. We looked at it uh, during the pandemic. And then the paper before the pandemic on subjective well-being and home working. Thank you. <laughs>